guys, let me go ahead and turn it over to um, Jenny Betts from GLSEN. My name is Jenny Betts, and I work with GLSEN, the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. So here at GLSEN, some of you may be aware of our work. We um, basically are focusing on creating safe and respectful and helpful schools, uh, especially for um, LGBT students. And I just wanted to go through a couple things about what we've been up to and also some of the statistics, talking about not just the problem, which builds upon what NCTE and PFLAG and, and the ADL and everyone else has done work around, um, but also what some of the solutions are, um, what we've seen actually reduces some of those risks for students. Um, first of all, I do want to relate back to um, all the great stuff that Justin just said, um, and in particular, I want to point out to you that when we do work in schools with educators, we do training, um, and one of the things that we start with in the beginning and always come back to throughout it is what we call our primary message, and that primary message is that addressing anti-LGBT bias in schools makes schools safer for all children, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity or expression. Um, so really from our perspective, yes, first and foremost, we want to make sure that LGBT students or questioning students are safe and respected and feel included in school. But we also know that if that happens, everybody benefits. Having a safer climate means everyone benefits. And even more so because so many students, even not LGBT identified students, are bullied or teased or harassed based on whether or not they look like a boy or act enough like a boy or a girl, um, oftentimes around these um, gender stereotypes and also the use of that's so gay and all these things really impacts every student and their ability to just bring their whole selves to the table and really be who they are um, and to have a safe place to come to school. So we know the connections between anti-LGBT bullying and harassment and, and really sense of safety for everyone. Um, I want to point out, and in front of you, you see something about our Safe Space Kit, um, which is a new um, campaign that we have to put a kit of information um, that's really actually quite wonderful um, into every middle and high school in the country. So you can go to safespacekit.com um, to find out more about that and how you can get it to your school. Um, also, for you on the call, you can um, go to glisten.org, and that's where all the resources that I'll talk about in the next minute are. Um, but there's also, you can download the Safe Space Kit and other of our resources as PDFs for free. Um, I wanted to just really quick um, run through some of the um, things that really stood out from our uh, latest National School Climate Survey. Again, you can find this information on glisten.org in the research section. Um, so, you know, we've heard these statistics before. We've been doing the survey for 10 years, and, and the answers seem to be similar, that 90% of LGBT students hear that's so gay or other ways that the word gay is used in uh, negative ways. 61.1% um, felt unsafe because of their sexual orientation. About 40% felt unsafe because of how they expressed their um, gender, and about 85% were verbally harassed. Um, we ha see students are three times more likely to have missed class um, than other students if they had been bullied and harassed, up to 30% of students um, reporting in our survey that they had missed at least one day, in one entire day of school in the last month because they felt unsafe or uncomfortable. Um, we also have seen lowered educational aspirations and academic achievement um, for those students who are being um, bullied and teased and harassed, and also um, uh, you know, there's connections between depression and victimization and anxiety um, and low self-esteem and all of those things. What we do know that helps, and this is the most important piece in my last few seconds here, is that we know that um, the presence of gay straight alliances and other similar student clubs in schools does help. Um, it does reduce uh, feelings of unsafety. It does re reduce um, school absenteeism. Um, also, inclusive curriculum. So having curriculum where um, LGBT themes and people in history are respectfully included um, uh, pretty, pretty drastically reduces also some of those um, uh, negative markers and also increases a sense of school connectedness for LGBT youth. Um, 
and then there's a huge um, bunch of research we've done around having supportive educators, and that's where most of you all come in, that even just having one supportive educator really, really can make the difference for a young person feeling safe um, at school. And um, when we see students that have even more than that, up to six or more, so a good number of adult allies on campus, um, their psychological well-being and educational aspirations really, really increase. Um, the last thing I want to say is that comprehensive and enumerated bullying policies, and this goes back, some of the people were asking questions specifically about what are the um, sort of more institutional changes we can make besides curriculum things, besides individual educators doing good work in a school, also all those bullying policies that all of you are working on in your schools, in your districts, at the state level and the federal level really do make a difference, especially when they're enumerated, meaning that they list out all the different categories that need to be protected under the law. Um, we found that without that enumeration, they are really, really ineffective, um, and so that's sort of one of the political pieces also to getting them passed, is that sometimes going back to that beginning, that if if we feel uncomfortable or it might be too controversial that we don't want to name all the categories, um, that actually it makes them really ineffective. So there are ways to really counteract some of the horrible things that we're seeing and that we've heard about for, um, you know, years and years that we know the experiences of LGBT youth um, are not always great in schools, but there are things that you all can do, that our parents can do, that our young people can do, and that we can work as organizations together with you. Please do visit Glisten org. There's a lot of great websites on, or great resources on there. You can always contact me as well. So thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much.